الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى وشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد Continuing with our study of some of the verses from the book of Allah Azza wa Jal and today we will talk about a verse in the Quran that it was said concerning by Ja'far al-Sadiq rahimahullahu ta'ala that this is the most comprehensive verse in the Quran as it relates to good character. That this is the most comprehensive verse in the Quran as it relates to good character. And this is the verse in Surah Al-A'raf, verse 199. This is the verse in Surah Al-A'raf, verse 199. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He said, خُذِ الْعَفْوَ وَأْمُرْ بِالْعُرْفِ وَأَعْرِضْ عَنِ الْجَاهِلِينَ And show forgiveness and enjoin with the good and turn away from the ignorant. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said خُذِ الْعَفْوَ وَأْمُرْ بِالْعُرْفِ وَأَعْرِضْ عَنِ الْجَاهِلِينَ Show forgiveness Command what is good and turn away from the ignorant. Turn away from the jahileen. And good character, brothers and sisters, is very important. And again, alhamdulillah, we are in the blessed month of Ramadan. And the month of Ramadan is the month to refine our characters. To improve our character. And there are various proofs for this. From the proofs, إِذَا كَانَ يَوْمُ صَوْمِ أَحَدِكُمْ If one of you are fasting, فَلَا يَرْفُثْ Do not speak with vulgar speech and it can be understood also to mean do not have relations. وَلَا يَسْخَبْ Do not raise one's voice quarreling, arguing. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, and if anyone was to insult you, فَإِنْ سَابَّهُ أَحَدٌ أَوْ قَاتَلُهُ فَلْيَقُلْ If someone tries to, if someone insults them or someone tries to fight them, they should say, I am fasting. Look, I'm a person that is fasting. And the ulama, they say, Ikhwan, with regards to that, the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet commanded, say I'm a person who's fasting. One, you're informing them and reminding them that it's Ramadan and we are fasting and we need to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the month of Ramadan and we are fasting and we need to fear Allah azza wa jal. Also, a person is letting it be known that I'm not scared or I'm not intimidated by Whatever is transpiring, however, I'm trying to fear Allah Azza wa Jal because I am fasting in this blessed month. So that statement there is very profound. فَإِنْ سَابَهُ أَحَدٌ أَوْ قَاتَلَهُ فَلْيَقُلْ Someone insults them or tries to fight them, say, verily, I'm a person that is fasting. That is courage. Why? Because that is acting upon the text of the book of Allah and the son of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And no doubt, brothers and sisters, good character that we find here, it falls under the general verse when Allah Azza wa Jal informs us about the reason of fasting. Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu kutiba alaykum usiyamu kama kutiba ala alladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. Oh, you who believe, fasting has been prescribed for you like it was prescribed for those who came before you so that you may fear Allah, so that you may possess piety. Good character is a part of piety. Good character is a part of piety. 
And as I said, the verse that we started with, خُذِ الْعَفْوَ وَأْمُرْ بِالْعُرْفِ وَأَعْرِضْ عَنِ الْجَاهِلِينَ Surah Al-A'raf Show forgiveness, pardon, be gracious, command with the good, and turn away from the ignorant. نعم جعفر الصادق رحمه الله يسد أمر الله نبيه بمكارم الأخلاق الله عز وجل commanded the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم with good character في هذه الآية this verse and he continued وليس في القرآن آية أجمع لمكارم الأخلاق من هذه الآية he said there is not a verse in the Quran that is more comprehensive as it relates to good character than this verse then this verse and Allah Azza wa Jalla said about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as it relates to character, conduct, behavior, interacting with others. And this is important for all of us, al akhlaq because our character says a lot about us. Our character, it says a lot about us. The way that we deal with people, it says a lot about us. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said مَا مِن شَيْءٍ يُوضَعُ فِي الْمِيزَانِ أَثْقَلُ مِنْ حُسْنِ الْخُلُقِ There is nothing that is placed upon the scale that is heavier than good character. There is nothing that is placed upon the scale that is heavier than what? حُسْنِ الْخُلُقِ Good character. And Allah Azza wa Jalla said about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam وَإِنَّكَ لَا عَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ you indeed have an exalted standard of character. The Prophet ﷺ, he had the best character. To the extent, Ikhwan, Abu Dhar radiallahu an, when the Prophet ﷺ was sent with the message as a Prophet, Abu Dhar heard about it and he sent his brother. He sent his brother to go and investigate the affair of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when his brother went and studied the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he came back to Abu Dhar, look at the words, how he described the Prophet Alaihi Salatu Wasallam. He said, رَأَيْتُهُ يَأْمُرُ بِمَكَارِمِ الأخلاق. I found that he, meaning Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I found him to command with good character. Good character. Good character, when we deal with our elders, we respect them. They are not from us. Those who do not have mercy upon the young and those who do not respect the elders. They are not from us. Those who do not respect the elders and those who do not have mercy upon the young. Good character. They have good character when they deal with their neighbors. They have good character when they deal with their brothers or their sisters. They have good character when they deal with the people generally. Even the non-Muslims. Even the non-Muslims. Because Allah Azawajal in the Quran, He said, وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ husna." Speak to the people in a good fashion. And the ulama, they said, in the books of tafsir, narrating from some of the salaf, that's referring to the Muslim and the non-Muslim. Because Allah said, and speak to the people, and nas, with good speech. So what do you think about your brother or your sister? What do you think about your brother or your sister? More so, if Allah is real, commands you to speak to everyone in a good fashion, respectfully, then what about your brother or your sister? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said in the hadith collected by Tirmidhi and others, he said, Inna min ahabbikum ilayya wa aqrabikum ilayya majlisan yawm al-qiyama ahasinakum akhlaqa. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the most beloved of you to me and the closest of you city in sitting to me on the day of resurrection are those with the best character. SubhanAllah, look at that. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and every single one of us should want to be loved 
by the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam. He said, Inna min ahabbikum ilayya. The most beloved of you to me. Wa aqrabikum minni majlisa yawm al qiyamah. And the closest of you in sitting to me on the day of resurrection, every believer should want to be close to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in station. The Prophet said, Ahasinakum akhlaqa. Those who have the best character, the best conduct. And especially brothers and sisters when people come to the masjid. When people come to the masjid, new people, or old people, it doesn't matter. We should have the best character, especially those who claim to follow Quran and Sunnah with the understanding of the Salaf. With the Salaf rude, where are you getting that from? With the Salaf disrespectful, where are you getting that from? That's not in the Quran, that's not in the Sunnah, that's not in the way of the Sahaba. That's not in the way of the tabi'een or the atba' tabi'een. Because the masjid is the house of Allah It doesn't belong to any one of us. وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ The masajid they belong to Allah. This doesn't belong to any of us. However, when people come, especially those, حَبِذُكُمُ Allah. That may be trying to get things together. Maybe they're weak in their religion. But they're coming to the masjid to improve their state. Or try and work on their condition. More so them. Because you don't want to fall into the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When he said, Ayyuhan nas, innakum munafirun. When he said, oh mankind, oh people. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, oh people, some of you chase people away. Some of you chase people away. Some of you discourage people from good deeds. Look at that. The Prophet Wasallam said, O oh people, أَيُّهَا nas, إِنَّكُمْ munafirun." O oh people, some of you discourage others from doing good. May Allah protect us from being from amongst them. Look at the example as well. He said, فَمَنْ صَلَّ بِالنَّاسِ فَلْيُخَفِّفْ Whoever leads the people in prayer, then lighten the prayer. Shorten the prayer. He said, because فَإِنَّ فِيهِمْ الْمَرِيضِ Amongst them is the sick, والضعيف, and the weak, الْحَاجَةِ And the one with the need. Subhanallah, the Prophet wasallam said about these people, the one leading the salah. He's not done nothing that is forbidden per se. He hasn't disrespected anyone. He hasn't been rude. He hasn't insulted anyone. He hasn't been aggressive to anyone. The Prophet وسلم, said to the one who elongate the prayers and make it difficult upon the people, O oh people, in the kumunafirun. Some of you discourage people from doing good. What would he say about those people that discourage people coming to the masjid because of their bad attitude? What would he say about those people that discourage people from coming to the masjid because of their bad attitude and their bad conduct? And if you don't know how to deal with the people, then maybe you need to step aside. That's for all of us. Because the haq is above all of us. And we say it and we don't bite our tongue. Whether you like it or not. Because that's what we find in the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. Look at what the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam said. Yassiru wa la tu'assiru. Make things easy, do not make things difficult. Bashiru wa la tunafiru. Give glad tidings and don't chase the people away. Don't chase them away. People come to the masjid. Today we had a brother come to us. I don't see him here, even though he said he's going to be here. Hadahullah. I can't see him. Maybe he's here and I can't see him. If he is, alhamdulillah, let me know. But he said he was going to be here. I don't see him. And he came and he said, you know, some of the people, they're a bit uncomfortable from the people in the area to come to the masjid. I mean, Nam, we explained to him, maybe that's part of that is upon them because of the shortcomings they have and what they're involved in and they feel some type of way. And secondly, if they interact with somebody that is 
behaves in an inappropriate fashion, then that person represents themselves, not everyone here. That's one individual. However, we have to be mindful of these things. We have to be mindful of these things because at the end of the day, we see in our religion, Habidakum Allah, the importance of good character, good conduct. And those who say they follow Quran and Sunnah, they should be the best of the people in character. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Inna khiyarakum ahasinukum akhlaqa. He said, the best of you are those who have the best manners. So if you look at the opposite understanding, you would say the worst of you are those with the worst manners. That's correct, right? If the Prophet Sallallahu said, Inna khiyarakum ahasinukum akhlaqa. The best of you are those with the best manners. Then the worst of you are those with the worst manners. Conduct and behavior. And that is why now Allah said, Khudi afwa. Show forgiveness. Be gracious in your dealings. Wa'mur bil urf. Command with that which is good. And even when you do that, enjoying the good, the ulama say, they said, La bud. Min hadi thalatha. It is. Mandatory, it is incumbent that even when you enjoy the good, three things have to be present. Al-ilm, wal-rifqu, wal-sabr. Knowledge, gentleness, and patience. What's the order of which? Can anyone tell me? Huh? Knowledge. Knowledge come, becomes when? Huh? Huh? As it relates to enjoying the good and forbidding evil. Naam, you're right. Knowledge, al-ilm, before you command or before you forbid. Because you have to know that what you are enjoining is ma'roof, is good. Or what you are forbidding is munkar. So ilm, knowledge, comes before you even enjoin the good. Or before you forbid the evil. You have to have knowledge, al-ilm. The second is al-rifq, gentleness. When you're enjoying the good, you're gentle. That's the origin, that's the asal, yes. When you're dealing with, especially awam al muslimin the general people, the general Muslims who don't know no better, the origin is gentleness and kindness. Yes, there's a place for being stern. But even that sternness, it doesn't go to the level of bad character. Gentleness, that which the Prophet Sallallahu said, الرِّفْقُ لَا يَكُونُ فِي شَيْءٍ إِلَّا زَانَ Gentleness is not present except that it beautifies something. It is not removed except that it makes it ugly, it disfigures it. Rifq, when you're enjoining, that the person feels genuinely, genuinely like you, that you care about them. That the person feels genuinely that you care about them. And also after a sabr, after you've enjoined the good, you're patient. If the person takes it, alhamdulillah, if not, all that was upon you was to convey. You conveyed to the person, alhamdulillah, all that was upon you was to convey. That's it. And brothers and sisters, Allah Azza wa said, وَأَعْرِضْ عَنِ الْجَاهِلِينَ Turn away from the ignorant. This is how we deal with the ignorant from mankind. This is how we deal from the ignorant from mankind. And there's a beautiful narration. And this is involving Amir al Mu'mineen, Umar ibn al Khattab, radiallahu an. The leader of the believers, Umar ibn al Khattab. Look at the companions. That's what I'm saying. When we say that we are following the Quran and the Sunnah with understanding of the companions, let's look at the companions. Let us look at the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A man, he entered upon Umar. Umar was the leader. And he said, Ya ibn al-Khattab. He said, oh son of Khattab, look, never called him Amir al-Mu'mineen. He never said, normally when you, the leader of the believers, you, you would say, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen. Oh leader of the believers. You know, with respect. He said, Ya ibn al-Khattab. Oh son of al-Khattab. ما تعطينا الجزلة. He said, you don't give us much. ولا تحكم بيننا بالعدل. And you do not judge between us with justice. Umar became angry. 
to the extent that he wanted to punish the individual. He wanted to discipline him. Umar is the leader of the Allah. And this person spoke to him in that fashion. Umar, he wanted to have this person punished. Al Hur was present. He said, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen. He said, O leader of the believers. He said, Allah said to the Prophet, Khud al Afwa, Wa'mur bil Urf, Wa'arid an al Jahirin, Wa inna hadha min al Jahirin. He said, Allah said to the Prophet, Show forgiveness, pardon, be gracious, enjoy the good and turn away from the ignorant. Hur said, This person, he was talking to you like that, he's from the ignorant. When Al Hur recited the verse from the Quran, they said, Umar khalas. Any anger disappeared from him. Why? They said, Because Umar was waqaf. Kana waqafan in the kitabillah. He would stop with the book of Allah even if he was look he was upset because the person said to him you don't give us much you don't judge between us with justice Umar was angry but when Al-Hur recited the verse from the Quran Umar did not move he remained in his place and khalas the anger disappeared from him why? because because he was someone that always stopped with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Brothers and sisters, do we stop with the book of Allah? When a person is angry and upset and they're on the verge of fighting and someone says, seek refuge with Allah from the shaitan. And they say, I don't want to hear that right now. MashaAllah. And you're someone that submits to the Quran? What, only when you're happy? Not angry? You're somebody that submits to the sunnah? You tell, you tell them, you remind them, seek refuge with Allah from the shaitan. It's not time for that now. This is what I want. That's an example of now you've given precedence to Yahweh over the book and the sunnah. And again, brothers and sisters, I emphasize before we break our fast, the importance of good character, working on our character, all of us. Because characters, the ulama, they mention them. Some people Allah created them with certain characteristics and qualities, generosity, nam, honesty, mercy, compassion, and other than that, shyness. However, some people may need to improve in those areas. So nam, there are also characteristics and qualities that we need to work on if we are lacking in those areas. And it's not an excuse to say, that's the way I am. You're using profanity, every other word, and someone says, Akhi, stop using profanity. You say, that's the way I am. Wallahi, brothers say these type of things. We've heard them. That's how I talk. Akhi, taqi Allah, fear Allah with your tongue. Likewise, the way you deal with people, the way you deal with the elders, the way you deal with the young, the, day, the way you deal with your wife, the way you deal with your husband, the way you deal with your children. Respect. Have respect. When you deal with people, regardless of their station. Because you have to deal with people the way that you want to be dealt with. That comes in the hadith. Man ahabba an yuzahzaha anin nar. Whoever wants to be distanced from the hellfire. Wa yadkhul al jannah and enter paradise. Then let, when death comes to him. Wa yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir. Then let him believe in Allah on the last day. وَيَأْتِي إِلَى النَّاسِ مَا يُحِبُّ أَنْ يُؤْتَ إِلَيْهِ Then let him deal with the people like he loves to be dealt with. Whoever loves to be distanced from the hellfire and entered into paradise. Then when death comes to him, let him believe in Allah on the last day and deal with the people the way he loves to be dealt with. That's for men and women. Look, it's about paradise and hellfire. The thing that enters people the most into paradise, good manners. Good character, like I said. Shyness, compassion, honesty, a sidq, generosity, respect, fulfilling one's word, fulfilling one's agreement. Any sifa that is jamila, any quality or characteristic that is good and beautiful. Naam, that is what we should strive to possess. When someone's talking to us, alhamdulillah, we pay attention to them. We're not ignorant and we turn away 
like they have no importance or no worth and we know that they're talking to us. La. Good character. Al khuluq al hasan. And again, somebody may ask, what's a good book to read about good character? Read Riyadh al-Salihin. Riyadh al-Salihin. And Ikhwan, I close with this. Barakallahu feek. As it relates to the da'wah, we know that people who don't like the da'wah, they're looking for any excuse to say, ah, oh, that's those Salafis. Or specifically, you know, Germantown. Ah, oh, New Germantown are like that. If we know that, why are we going to give them ammunition? Why are you going to give them? If you know some people, they come looking for that, or some of them, they have already preconceived notions based upon maybe lies and fabrications. Why are you going to give them that impression to take away because of your bad conduct and your bad behavior? Is that the representation that you want to give about the da'wah? Wallahi, when we sat with the scholars, we didn't find this akhlaq. So if you say that you are representing the da'wah of the ulama, none of the scholars had bad character. Even the staunchest of them upon the sunnah, like Shaykh and Shaykh Muqbi rahimahullah. Wallahi had the most beautiful character. If you met him, you wouldn't even know who he was because of his gentle nature and his compassion that he had to the people that were around him. That's what we find with Ahlul Ilm. That's what we find with those people that fear Allah Azza wa Jal. Good character, good conduct. And it doesn't matter who they're dealing with. Whether they know the person or they don't know the person. Some people, someone comes in with money, you know, oh, well, how's everything? You know, let me open every, I'll be on my best behavior. Somebody comes, they don't know them, they don't even look at them. That's not Islam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Naam, they even was, at the time when he was sent with his message, they were even amazed the way that he dealt with the poor and the orphans and the needy. They couldn't even differentiate because of his conduct. How he dealt with the poor and the needy. People that didn't have names. In our time, you have to have a name or you have to be someone in order to get treated courteously. That's not from Islam. That's because a sign, well, billah, that's a sign of somebody not loving for Allah because you got ulterior motives. It's about what someone can do for you. Because if you love for Allah, you would love every believer the way Allah has commanded you to love them. And as I said, even as it relates to the non-Muslims, some people think because they're not a Muslim, I can disrespect them. No, Allah said, وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ husna." Speak to the people properly, with good manners, in a good fashion. And the ulama of Islam, we say we follow the Salaf, the Salaf said the Muslim and the non-Muslim. So you can't go out, you're parked in, you're blocking the neighbor, the neighbor can't pull their car out, and they say, you're blocking me, and then you start cussing them out. And you say, your excuse when somebody advises you, you say, they're not even Muslim. Where did you get that from? Which, which, which book did you get it from? You got it from the book that you wrote, because it's not Quran and Sunnah. That's where you got it from. Again, Ikhwan, akhlaq, character, is a da'wah in itself. You don't have to say anything. The way you conduct yourself, people look at you. People see, look, look how that brother behaves. Look how that sister behaves. And especially when we're walking around with thobes, or you're walking around with a hijab, or you're walking around with a jilbab, or you're walking around with a niqab, and you got a beard. And if you're walking around and you're behaving in a vulgar fashion, using profanity, or you're behaving, you're in the middle of Germantown Avenue and you're ready to fight, and you're calling people out to fight, what does that say? One, you're weakening the image of the Muslims and it's a bad representation for Islam. These are things that we have to be mindful about. And brothers and sisters, the Prophet Wasallam would make dua to Allah for Allah Azza wa to perfect his character. What about us? The Prophet Wasallam would make dua to Allah for Allah to perfect his character. And he was the best of characters. وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you Muhammad have an exalted standard of character. But he used to say, oh Allah, like you have perfected my creation, perfect my character. May Allah perfect all of our characters. Amen. And may Allah forgive us for our shortcomings. Amen.